I've got to introduce my next guest. I don't even know where to start with this one. I mean, we have done so much together over the years. I mean, we traveled the seven seas, you know, we've climbed mountains, we've been through hail, sleet, fire and brimstone. And that's just one Glastonbury. <laughs> Yo, I'm just going to get to it, man. It's so good to have you in the studio. Thanks. DJ Crust, Thanks. welcome to the Gutter Funk Show. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Man, it's been a while. Yeah, it's it's been almost a year since I've seen you, bro. Is it, it's over a year? No, yeah, probably. I mean, I saw you on the screen on a, you know, a, yeah, a yeah, mobile yeah. phone, but that don't count, does it? Yeah, man. Bro, it's so good to see you, yeah, bro. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for coming. It's good, man. I'm glad to be here. Glad to be in the new studios. And I was just saying, mm. is E Street the new... Stokes Croft. Well, I think it's the new uh, Sunset Boulevard, but I feel like the, the real estate there is uh, it's listen, up for grabs. Yeah, listen, it's uh, it's got all the hallmarks of something great. <laughs> all the makings. All the makings. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later, man. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, good to see you, man. What is going on? A lot, man. A lot. You know, it's been really busy year last sort of 18 months, really. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. man. I mean... You've been, you know, did the album last year? Did the album, yeah, that was really good. The Edge of Everything, first album in a quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> a quite a while. We don't need to talk in numbers. And you know what? It doesn't matter. You came back with a bang. This this album has, you know, it's hit a lot of marks, man. I mean, it's, yeah. it's created a lot of noise and it's still creating noise. You know, yeah. you've just released the, the remix LP yep. as well, yep. which, I mean, if you haven't seen it already, I mean, just check out the list of yeah. producers that you've got on board for that. It's nuts. It's a yeah. star-studied cast, man, yeah. for real, for real. Yeah. You know, you've got Uncle, yep. Masters at Work, yeah. Hodge. Yeah. The list goes on, man. Just yeah, check it out, man, because it's, it's, it's some it's some futuristic stuff. Yeah, you know. So big ups, Cross. Thank first you very all, much. No, man. Swoo. Can we get just a little bit of background? You know, what I mean, you were you're from No West, Bristol. Yeah, yep. um, just up the road from here. Just up the road, not far. Mm. And um, yeah, you know, tell us a little bit about growing up there and a little bit about how you first got into music. Yeah, so you know, born and bred Bristol, grew up in No West. You know, um, <clears throat> got kind of introduced to music from my older brother. And he was like, you know, the 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 influence in the family would always ex- you know, bring us these experimental new things like, hey, here's this Atari. Hey, here's a VHS. Hey, here's like whatever it yeah, was. Yeah, and then yeah, one yeah. day he comes in and goes, here's this video with this graffiti on it. And you're like, what's this? And he goes, watch it. And it's like this thing called Wildstar. And it was like, wow. Game changer. Yeah. The, you know, f- you know, about five 14 year olds in a room watching it. Right. Little brains. Psh- Right. Completely We're broke. talking about Rick here, yeah? Yeah, Shout brother. out to Rick Thompson, yeah. man. And yeah. all the rest of the family right now, do you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah, mad. So everything was coming in for, via him, yeah? He was the guy that just brought him in. And mm-hmm. he, he was hanging out with this guy called um, uh, LED. And yeah, That's Michael. M- he lived across the road from yeah. me. This is yeah. this is a mad link up because yeah. before we even met, I knew about LED. Yeah, I was in um, a breakdance crew yeah. with a lot of my Indian brothers, and LED was like the you know he was the DJ for the crew, so right. he would sort us out with all these cassette yeah. tapes, yeah. with these mad mixes on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we on. were hearing those mixes. Yeah, we yeah. were hearing those yeah. tapes. And he'd overlay Captain Caveman. Yeah, and Masters of the Universe, <laughs> He Man. Yeah, crazy. And this is before we met. This, this is a yeah. good few years and before we met. And also, also, this was before like. Mm. I don't know how he was doing the mixes, but he was mixing between two tape decks, three right. tape decks. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he was doing like good mixing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was pulling off some dark he was, science. Yeah, he was doing some, and we were like, "How is this mm. guy doing it?" Because mm. it's fresh. This it, is just like you don't even see it on the TV at that point. It was nuts. Yeah. Right, right. So you know him, and then watching Wildstar, it was like, right, mm. that's what I'm going to do. Right. And so it was very clear to me like that was going to be the path I was going to I was going to go on. And so. Um, you know, I quickly kind of started studying the art, really. Started DJing, mm. you know, just practicing on belt-driven we're, we're, decks. And, and your other brothers as well were big yeah, into so, it as well. So, so Flynn was in the game. Shout out to Flynn, man. F- yeah, Flynn and Gangstar, my younger brother. So yeah, we were like, all of it. And then there was a few others, Bungie, mm. Whitley, right. you know what I mean? A few others that probably right. we shouldn't name. <laughs> 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 but, you know, the, the, the crew yeah, was yeah, the yeah. crew grew, do you know what I mean? And yeah. we were like, you know, influenced in the area where where it could have gone either way, but we kind of went through the music and we kind of got protected in a way because people knew we were doing the music right. and when anything 
was, you know, it was like we kind of had like the green card to go and do certain things where, right? Because anyone who's been about, about you know, where the areas we're talking about, No West, yeah, it's it kind of like a suburb, you know, a little bit, a, it a could, little bit rough. It yeah. could, it could, it's cleaned up a lot over the years. Yeah. But you know, over the years, um, back in the days, do you know, I mean, there wasn't ease in the area, and um, you know, it had this notorious kind of rep. For it, it could it. get like, tricky. Yeah. It'd be easy if you go up No West, you know, because you know things could get on top. Yeah, it, it, you know? it could get tricky sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I so, lived in Totterdown, which is just down the road from there. Yeah. So. But yeah, carry on. Yeah, so we started to go to this youth club called Eagle House and they gave us a back room and then we used to start hanging, doing uh, monthly parties in there. We had like Easy Groove come up. We had some, yeah, we had like oh, guys wow. from Hartcliffe come over. Right, it's a youth club. Uh, it's Eagle a youth House. club, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so it just, we kind of turned it into like our sort of center, like, like and all the Took youth over, basically. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and all the surrounding areas, breakdancing kind of blew up. Breakdance, right. the film kind of blew right, up. Right, right, right. Uh, there's, there's another one that kind of blew up as Beach well. Beach Street, breakdance. Yeah, Beach Street, that's the um, other one. Subway, not Subway, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, the graffiti one. Yeah, <laughs> and so, but yeah, the, the, that, the whole culture was getting a lot of, you know, a lot of heat. And, mm. you know, we were like, right, we want to be, the sort of center of it for this side of town, you know right. what I mean? We kind of was was nurturing that, and then one day, I think it's Flynn walked past. We used to go past these squats down in St. Luke's Road, right? And St. Luke's squats, man, St. Yeah. Luke's yeah, squats, yeah, yeah. yeah, legendary. And then spots, he heard man. some music coming out of some right. house, right? And you can see down, walk down the lane, mm. and there was like a row of squats, and he's like, "What's going on in here?" And then boom, a couple of months later, we ended up putting our sound system in there, right? And just started DJing and doing right. parties and then took over a warehouse at the bottom of the garden. Which is where I first kind of, like, I never knew you then, but yeah. I remember coming in the warehouse to yeah. check you guys out. Yeah. I could hear the music coming up over, I lived there above this train tracks yeah. and the squat was at the bottom. Yeah. You know, it was like an anarchistic kind of spot. You had people yeah. in there, there's a skate ramp in there. You know, you had people there <laughs> just doing what they wanted basically, you know, and it was, but it was a community still. It was, a, it was like another youth club. Yeah. It was an extension yeah. of the yeah. youth club. Yeah, because with the SIDS, there was the, the, yeah. um, the little shop. Everyone used to yeah. Out and there, just buying penny juice. Yeah, back in the days and yeah. tutti fruit. Two pound bottle of purple beer. Right, right, right. I was, I was too young for the purple beer, man. But crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beer, so that's for the first time. So I went about seeing you guys. You were DJing in the Scout Hut. Yeah. And I come in. I heard the music, so I'm like, you know, kind of followed the noise down and got in there. And um, and then they had check you guys. Out. You were setting up. And then I remember coming down at the night time and it was just raining and yeah. there's just loads of rain coming through the roof. And you yeah. guys were like patching up the roof and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But yeah, proper, yeah, yeah. Proper warehouse vibes, So man. that was the fresh four. So right? that was the fresh four, yeah. And we and we kind of just rid that out. My brother made a tune. Right. With Smith Wishing Almighty. On a star. Called Wishing on a Star, yeah. And that went that got signed to the majors. Yeah. Kind of yeah. everything just took off, went crazy for a bit. Yeah. And then, you know, the inevitable happened. We got dropped from the label because we didn't know what we were doing. We were yeah. young, dumb yeah. and whatever. <laughs> And then, and yeah, then, yeah, and yeah. then, and then, really, that I think you know, all these lessons was really leading up to what was about to happen next. You mm. know, I started hanging out with you mm. for, properly, then dar, um, serve, and we started to hold up, um, yeah. hang out with Smith and Mighty a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we could see the scenes starting to come together. Mm. You know, you had like Peter D, you had like Bonnick and Alvin, and right, them doing right, this with right, Charlie right. Cheese and Yo, Charlie there, Cheese. Right? You know? There was like a community coming yeah, together of people yeah, making yeah. music and yeah. people we'd all hang out. Got a together. shout out Smith and Mighty, you know, the godfathers of this thing. Yeah, who man. really, you know, I mean, I feel like you know, if they weren't there, you know, just kind of like you know. Look out for us, you know. Yeah, then, you yeah, know, yeah. we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. No, so, they, know, they, they gave us the back room. Huge salute, they did. They gave us the back room in their, yeah. their studio. Yeah, and just said that you guys, <laughs> you know, there's a there's a desk in there. Yeah. I think um, a Casio FZ1 yeah, sampler, yeah, yeah. 14 seconds, you know, yeah. and, and a couple of FX units. Uh, yeah, but yeah. mad. Can you remember when we first met? I remember hearing uh, the sound of a skateboard outside of our window. For a couple of days in a row, because we used to have a Catch Twenty Two Cycle Couriers on the top of Picton Street. Yep, yep. Well, yeah, yeah. And I kept hear, we kept hearing this skating sound. And one day we looked out and we just saw the back of your head. <laughs> and the next day we looked out and saw the back of your head and was like, "Who's this? Who's this cat skating?" And me and Flynn was like, "Right, we're going to see who this cat is." And at four o'clock in the afternoon, we see him come skate that cut. So we right. looked out. And I think Flynn held you out, didn't he? He's right, like, right. yo, yeah, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, 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 <laughs> Flynn. I mean, I, I bucked up with Flynn first, you know. Right. And it was, it was through skateboarding. It was yeah. kind of like a, yo, you know, yeah, well, you skate, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kind of knew who you guys were, do you know what I mean? Like, so I met Flynn and, right. you know, I kind of seen you and stuff. And you were like superstars, do you know what I mean, <laughs> at that time. So, you know, I was like, 
you know, I just, I was already met Jody right. out west and kind of got a little bit into it, but I just seen you guys throwing parties and doing clubs and just running around the place and like, you know, yeah. got to, got to know you and then, you know, got kind of invited to hang out and you couldn't get rid of me then. Yeah, I remember you came into the, we, remember we built that little skate park in the yeah. back of the office. Right, at the back of the uh, uh, Catch-22 office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that was it. Yeah, it was like, you know, yeah, yeah you can teach us some skate tricks and like, yeah. you know, we'll show you some DJ moves, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, but that's what ended up happening, you know, mm. and um, you know, I just kind of tagged along with you guys throughout that whole success and yeah, 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 yeah. that was maybe my, my inbringing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that sort of led us on to go into all the free raves as right, well. Right, you right, know, right. We started to go to the free raves. Because right. still, we still didn't really sort of hang out. But mm. I think the first time like, I ever remember like, seeing you was um, at a rave, was at uh, Chip and Sobbery. Chip and Sobbery, yeah. Chip and Sobbery Free Festival. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I remember it was like the mad, I think it was 91. Right. And it was like the kickoff of the rave thing, and the, like yeah. Avon Free Festival. Yeah. And I remember just bucking into you on the, on the dance floor. Right. <laughs> but things were different, you know, the vibe was different there. And we just yeah. had this look in our eye, like we knew something new was yeah, going yeah, on, yeah, you know. Yeah, and I think yeah. from that point, it really did sort of, yeah. the change started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, crazy. Swoo. But the text line's been kicking off, man. We've got a few okay. listeners out there. Cool. Um, so yeah, shout out to all the listeners, <laughs> everyone locked. But yeah, someone just asked, um, when did we start making music together? Was it pre Mercury Music Prize? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, quite a lot earlier. Yeah, we were like coming back from the raves hit in the studio, weren't right. we? <laughs> Can you remember the first bits we made together? Uh, stay. Nah, what? this is pre that, man. Oh, the whole. Um, <laughs> the error of judgment. The error of judgment. Right. The whole. Uh, Com- that was the early, early Comanche. That was the stuff. birth of Comanche. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, for yeah. the listeners that don't know, myself and Crust, you know, we, we yeah. were called. We were called Comanche. We still are Comanche in the yeah. spirit, spiritual sense. Yeah. But um, yeah, we did the album, come out yeah. full cycle, um, featured the host of uh, guests and stuff. And uh, yeah, but we started, I mean, this was like 92, I guess then. Yeah. Cause it was, it was in Smith and Mighty's B room yeah. on the FZ1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Still got that tune? Somewhere, yeah. Let's <laughs> dig that one out, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like down tempo as well. That's a John Woo sa- Yeah, John Woo sample though, right. isn't it? From, um, film samples. Film sample, yeah. Right. Yeah. We've always used some film samples when we make tunes, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Right, yeah. Era of Judgment. Era of Judgment, yeah. man. And then we did Stay, yeah. which is the Star Trek sample. And then Warriorship. Right. Um, Hostile. 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 I didn't think that one would come out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, we, we've done some bits over the years and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, as a solo artist yourself, you know, you know, you have, um, you've been diligent to the cause. You know, you have, uh, you know, we were just saying earlier. I don't think there's been one moment where you've sort of deviated from your plan. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And you know, you stayed true to the cause, yeah, true yeah, to yeah. your cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and like. I mean, God, I was looking for tunes to play down here, you know, and then I, I just, there's so many over yeah. the years. And one thing that struck me about your music is that it always tells a story. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. where does that come from? Um, I mean, I, I, I'm a big fan of, of cinema. I love film. I love, I love storytelling. Mm. And I love the way films are really kind of unpredictable in the sense like, you know, a really good film just mm. blows your mind in a way that you'd never saw come in and I really like that about film I like I like the way you can lure people down the maze in a movie to a false sense of security yeah and and I really I really like that and I think for me when I did when I started to get into as Frost calls it the widescreen era right where where I did soul emotion true stories future unknown um I and think sort of the last day. I think the last day, for, yeah, for me, was the last was day. Like Twelve purpose. minutes as well. Twelve minutes, right? Um, brief encounters, right? And so when I was kind of getting into that, I was really inspired by, you know, first of all, the, where we were going in the scene, it felt like, it, it, it felt back then like everyone was kind of finding their niche, finding what they were good at. Mm. And I had a, I had a, a while of sort of trying to figure out what I was good at. Mm. You know, I had some success with guests and follow the, not follow the vision, um, Warhead right, and right, things right, like right, that. Right. And, and and they were good tunes. They were great dance tunes, but they weren't really like r- r- right. who I was. I mean, people love those records. You oh, know what I'm saying? Listen, like, I love them you know, as well. The, when you're on the dance floor mode, you know, for those that don't yeah. know, Crust is also gang related. He's also Glamour Gold <laughs> and he's also George Kurtz. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. right. But you know those dance floor records. You know, for the DJs, you know, they were like, oh, 
weapons. Yeah, you know? and, and, and and that's what it was for us. People wanted more of that. Yeah, it was know? it was Friday night, Thursday, Friday night. Mm. Go to the club, smash it up, and I mean that worked for a while. And you got to remember, we've been doing this. So when I met you, I was probably like twenty, right? Maybe twenty one, right? right? Right. I was so, like, I was like. 14, 15. Yeah, it was like and so 87, 88. Yeah, so from then to about mm. you know 31, we were just constantly in the studio making, right. making all these tunes. So it's, it it just got to a point where I I I, I exhausted all the possibilities right, that right. I could do you in were that like format, a, like a barrage of tunes. Man. Yeah, I mean, like for that period there, I mean, we were all very prolific at that yeah. time, you know. And I think yeah. it was a little synergy between us all. Yeah, you, me, Ronnie, so yeah. the whole group. We, yeah, we were on fire. Yeah. Right? Dare I say so myself? Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. And and the tunes were coming thick and fast. It was like every week, you know, we were making like two, maybe you know, one, 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 two tunes each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'd go to music house with this batch of tunes, you know, between us. Mm. <laughs> it was like it was, we would turn up with like you yeah. know, set up shop. We're here for a minute now. Yeah, We're here real. to cut, yeah. cut down the place, and yeah. uh, you know, I think that's how we sort of made so much noise is because. The volume of music we were it was producing. consistently yeah. like dance floor stuff. It yeah. was like boom, a boom, lot, boom. a lot. It was right. yeah. So but that can only go so far, and and that's what happened. It was like I think I just reached the sort of natural conclusion of that without regurgitating myself and feeling like I just needed to do it to keep relevant. Mm. It was like well, that's a brave move, you know. You know, to well, give up something that's working and say so you dive into the you know. Go well, and- it's b boy. It's mm. being a b boy. And, and in True. the b-boy it says there's there's simple rules i follow mm-hmm. being a b-boy first don't bite right don't rule number one <laughs> rule number one don't bite don't steal don't copy from the man them second rule be original right right be original you know mm-hmm. third rule you know always be fresh always come with the dope style right, right? The dope you know st- and the fourth one is like have some honor mm-hmm. right have some self-respect and some yeah. honor right? right and so that's just been my code all the way through. And like, whenever I found myself trying to be relevant or trying to keep up, I would stop. Mm. And, you know, it got, it, it got to a point where I did all of those things. I smashed at the dance floor and it was like, I need to do something else yep. to keep excited about music. Yeah, 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 and that's yeah, when yeah. the whole soul emotion of widescreen thing came out. Cause that was like, that felt like for me, it was the next thing to do. And if you remember as well, we were simplifying, the music was, be, we were simplifying what our patterns as well. Do you remember? We made simple tunes. We, but we day. were going from crazy amen right. tunes and we started right. to get real subtle with our drums right. and right. subtle right. with right. our right. arrangements. Right. And I could sense we were moving somewhere else. And for me, what mm. was what was happening was, I felt like I was going to bring this, this you know, widescreen era into the camp. Right. And that was where this I This was your offering. This, this was, was what my, you were going to bring exactly, to the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's mad. Yeah, there were, you know, things were getting very complicated. I remember Andy saying to me one time, he goes, think about you guys, right? You make a tune that's got like, I don't know, like 10 sounds in minimum. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And it just rolls and it's mm. just simplified it down. But, mm. you know, we're just keeping just enough in there to keep you interested, mm. but not filling it out, not busy. It's, left, it's leaving something for the mi- mi- imagination yeah. and for something for the DJ to put yeah. on top. Because yeah. we were always mixers, right? Yeah. We were like, we love rolling out the mix. Yeah. And that's what, what I mean. Putting two tunes together, making yeah. the tune out of two tunes exactly. and like, exactly. you know, being creative with yeah. your skills, yeah. making tunes for that. So, yeah. Mad. Swoo. But um, yeah, people are getting in, in touch on the text. They're asking, you know, what other spots did we used to rip up back in the days in Bristol? Um, uh, you had the, the Malcolm X at the Crypt, then, then there was uh, the uh, Depot. The Depot. There was a Depot, was there was crazy. Tropic Club. Tropics. And then it was Moon Club before it was Lakota. Right, right, right. Tropics is where Love In is right now. Yeah, so down the back end, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then George's Basement. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's a bit later on. That was that called was Club later. Loco. Yeah. Uh, Rummer. The Rummer, you yeah. You guys used to play the Rummer. Feckler. The Feckler. That was back the spot. The day, yeah. That was Defcon used to run that yeah. spot red. Yeah. And... Um, Trinity, it's a bit later Trinity on. Trinity a little bit. But it, this, we're talking, we're, we're jumping through the eras here, do you know what I mean? So yeah. we're going from like, you know, late 80s all the way through the 90s. Different spots for different eras. Yeah, man, I, mean, I mean, in the, in, the, in, the, in the real, real beginning, beginning, there wasn't many, many spots you could play, you know I mean? You could do, you could do um, the Rummer, you could do the Feckler. Um, Moon Club was kind of just coming up, but it wasn't really there yet. So you had... Um, I mean, we never did it, but you had the the, um, the 
the dugout. The dugout, right? Yeah, um, that was before my time. So yeah, I never so, went to the dugout, man. Yeah. It's almost like the stories from the dugout are like greater than the actual. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like I mean, the, the mythology the of when, the dugouts. When I sandwich. went now, I just remember the floor being really sticky. <laughs> I've heard that. And I was like, I, and it was like <laughs> sticky but it was carpet. Like, but it was like the first time I went to New right. York, and it right. stunk. Do you right. know what I mean? I was like, right. Right. I was like, never told you about that bit. No, but I was like, this is my dream. Right, you know, right, my right. fantasy of coming to New York and meeting some hip hop people walking down the street and it stunk. It was like, just put me off. <laughs> it killed oh, my vibe oh a my bit. Oh my God. Yeah, but, um, expect the unexpected and you might be yeah. prepared, Crust. I mean, there was, like I said, there wasn't many places in Bristol. It right. was like, it was the house parties. That's what it house was really parties about. And, and the squat parties. And the and squat stuff. parties, And yeah. it was DIY as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if you put on the night back in the day, I mean, this is before, like, you'd have to, like, letraset your flyers. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, if you don't know what that was, it's like getting small bits of letter and kind of yeah. like rubbing them on the paper. Yeah. You make your own flyers, then you go and photocopy yeah. them, you know, and kind of like distribute. It's all self-distribution. It was self all DIY. Done. Yeah, DIY. So uh, later on and stuff, um, you know, one one legendary night I remember was uh, Creation. Right. We did the full cycle thing there. Yeah. And we got Kenny Dope over. Yeah. And uh, we were just like, Kenny Dope has always been like our hero. Do you yeah. know what I mean? He's always been like the breakbeat master, you know, the hip hop yeah. master, yeah. The, you know, the, the versatile master. You yeah. know what I mean? He can try his hand to any style. Yeah. He's a proper, proper DJ. Like, yeah. um, And we got him over to come over to DJ for us at a, you know, a full cycle night. Yeah. And we're like, well, what's he going to play? None of us knew what he's going to play. Is he going <laughs> to yeah. play house? Is he going to play breakbeats? Yeah. Or, you know, he might just play rag or whatever. And it's like, you know, I remember saying, Kenny, what are you going to play? <laughs> Hip hop man, <laughs> <laughs> hip hop man, yeah. and um, he, he had to come on in the middle of the night, like sort of in in the middle of the jungle and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I think he started with some flip mode track, and you know right. it was all like um, Simon Says, right. get the f up, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. it was just like a hype time for hip hop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There was yeah. some serious bangers. Annie Up was out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He came down and just, just shut the dance yeah, down in hard. a serious way. Anyone yeah. that was there knows, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. For those classic, who ask, classic, that yeah. was a heavy, heavy, yeah. heavy night. Swoop. And um, yeah. you're also, uh, you're doing mentoring as well? Yeah, so I have a brand called Adapt the Canvas now, yeah. and we're, we're branching out, so we're doing more education. There's Adapt the Canvas Academy now, where oh, I'm wow. going to be doing more coaching, mentoring. So we've got three different levels. We're look, working with managers, CEOs, directors. Right. And we're also going to be looking at also, obviously, artists, DJs, producers, yeah. singer-songwriters. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. so we're offering two different courses, right. a Wednesday course. Right. Um, yeah, we're just developing that. It's been going for two years mm. now on this sort of Let the Cameras vibe. I do a podcast on a Tuesdays as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's been going really well. So Wicked. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to... You know, my mission is to elevate the consciousness of the planet through entertainment. Right. Like, that's right. my mission. Because it's a rocky road, man, for entertainers, man. You know, yeah, well, yeah. You know, a lot of us know if you've been through it, you know, it's not just A, B, C, D. No. You know, it's, um, you know, you've got to ride the waves. And, yeah. you, you know. There's there's not much coaching and mentoring no. from people who who are actually been to the top and come right. back. Right. You know, a lot of the stuff you see in colleges, and there's no disrespect for colleges or anything like right. that. And what I'm trying to say is, you know, you need experience to talk need, about yeah. it. Yeah, you need to you need to be speaking to people who can tell you mm. what it's like day in day out. You know, mm. and theory is good, like theory is good, but yeah, practical, yeah, yeah, actual yeah. experience. There's nothing comes from actual experience. Yeah, and so that's kind of what I'm, you know, feel like I can offer yeah, people yeah, so that yeah. real, yeah. you know, what it's like nitty gritty. Yeah, you know, nah. understanding what you have to do, how to behave on a day to day business. You know, like yeah, yeah. what it's like being on tour for three months. <laughs> On a bus with your friends. I don't think there's coffin. any type of training that gets you ready for that, K. Though, do you know what there I mean? Is there is, man. There I mean, like, if you cut this shit, if you if you come off there in any type of sameness, then you're doing well, you yeah. know. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, tour life, man, ain't nothing like it either. No, no, it's great. <laughs> and so, yeah, and so, really, it's really like it's just taking all of our combined wisdom right. and packaging it and offering it to people who want to understand. Not to say, well, I don't teach people what to do in the studio. That's nah, you know, nah, nah, I don't nah, nah. do that. But the whole thing is teaching them to follow their own. It's, that's right. It's like know. I'm trying to tell people, look, you're an individual. You're a powerful being. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. want to hear your story. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. these follow are the your tools. Heart on this one, man. Yeah, and these are the tools that we use right. to do that. So right, and these are know. the mistakes that you know yeah. I can tell you about. And yeah. But yeah, man, you know, I'm lucky enough. I've just, you know, I, I know you. So, you know, I've yeah, kind of, yeah, you know, yeah. that wisdom's rubbed off on me over the years. Yeah, you know but I mean? we've been so through it. We went, we went through geez. it from day dot. We went through it. We, we have. You know, we spent Christmas Day on a plane going from Tokyo to Sydney. You remember that? 
Christmas Day. I, listen, I'd never forget. Do you know what? There's so much stuff I can't actually really remember. It is a massive, massive blur, but the, yeah, the wickedest blur that. ever. Yeah, you know I remember I mean? that. It's like, but we were on tour. It was, oh, a, that was a really hard tour as well. We went all the way through Asia, right. through Tokyo. Then Christmas Day, we got yeah. on a plane and went to Sydney. Right. And, but we, when we, we were like, but eight I, people. Do you know, I remember getting there now. Yeah, and eight people on the flight. But when we got to Sydney, they took us to the rave and it was going off. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah that's man. why that's why we're that's why we're here. Right, right, yeah, right, so. right. Yeah, so many good times over the years, yeah. do you know. I mean, like we've gone from literally like, you know, cooking up pasta together to survive, you know, living off yeah. porridge and pasta, do you know what I mean? To travel in the world and winning yeah, awards, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's been a mad journey, man. So yeah. Well, we're just getting started, man. We are just getting started. You know, you know what I, I mean? really feel, I really feel like now I know what I'm doing. Right. I, me know? too. I really feel like... In a mad kind of way, because yeah. I, I don't actually know what I'm doing, but yeah. I've got that sort of self-confidence to follow my self-belief yeah, now. I think that's, what, yeah, now, I think that's what, I mean? what it's about, really having that mm. confidence to, to step into yourself. Yeah. And, you know, I had to say this, like, you know, you said about the new album, I had to say no a lot. Really? Yeah, because, like, things weren't going right, and... Mm. I was offered a few things and they weren't right and I, I was for like, album deals yeah yeah right. album deals and things that people were saying and it was getting to a point where I was like I don't know how this thing's mm. going to happen yeah. do you know what I mean yeah like, yeah yeah and I had to really dig in to right. everything that I'd learned over the last 20 years and just be patient right be calm because there's you no know, real there's no uh, navigations like no. for it either you have to just kind of like it's a bit of luck yeah. and it's a bit of intuition you know yeah. but yeah. you have to put the two together but yeah. it paid off man and yeah, that's I like, mean it, it, it was like making a tune when you don't know how it's going to finish but mm. you know you got something mm. and you just and you gotta just hold on you just got maybe just got to go to bed and just wake up in the morning and start again fresh with a clean slate. Right. I had three or four months of that. <laughs> <laughs> of just like, it's not your day to day, K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean? Just yeah. believe it. But it's that self belief to yeah. not give up and to yeah. carry on. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, you know, there is no stopping. Do you yeah. know what I mean? There is only show and prove, show and yeah, prove, yeah, show yeah. and prove, man. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Crazy. Mm. What's next? The future. Um, I've kind of been thinking about what's next really sort of sort of thinking about what to do music wise and project wise mm. and collaboration wise just trying to think about what's going to be exciting mm. what's going to be like it, uh, you know something that I can kind of really dive into and get my teeth sunk into right. so it's just meditation at the moment really right, just right. trying to figure it out yeah. not you know, not committing to anything but yeah. waiting really, for what comes natural to kind of what fit into place yeah I mean it, it's been a good sort of period there's the last sort of sort of year in the sense that the album's come out it's done what it's done but at the same time when we would be out touring actually, actually yeah, i've been at home absolutely really meditating and studying yeah. the art i'm right. looking at what to how to do different things and i've just right. been tinkering it's in a rare, rare opportunity to be able to do that because usually yeah. you know your record comes out you're on the road you know. know and it's you're, you're always playing catch up then yeah you know so it's hard to kind of like even think about what's next yeah. you know just rushing around the planet um yeah. But the future is unwritten, right? Yeah, I mean, it looks great from, from where I'm standing. It really does look great. I mean, there are mm. obvious things that we need to sort of deal with as a planet, of course. Absolutely. But we've always been dealing with those things, Absolutely. you know, as people. Absolutely. And uh, um, But it's about making the opportunity. It's about looking at what you want to do, how you want to contribute, you know, what your mm. legacy is. I'm mm. at that time now. I'm thinking about, you know, what I want to leave behind and what I wanted mm. to, um, how I want to contribute next, you know, right, and really right. do something, you know. Right. Right, because it is, you know, things have changed, you know, and the um, the opportunities that are out there might not be the same as they it's were different. before, you know. But, you know, my message to everyone is to just, like, keep going, man. Do you know what I mean? Dig deeper because, yeah. you know, they're, they're, like, it always comes out the cracks in the concrete, right? You know, you know this is when the best stuff happens, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. don't be scared of, of yeah. like, leaning into it. Yeah, it's like art always, life always gets represented through art and art always tells its story and all the way through human history from etching on the cave wall to you know Jeff Koons' 50 million dollar ceramic dog is like we were we've, we figured out how to communicate right? right and so I think we're this is a great period for us because if you really look at what's going on yeah of course there's great uh, resistance of course there's great disruptions but there's also great art yeah there's also more music being made now than it ever has done yeah, in history yeah, yeah yeah there's also more opportunity to make great art than right. it ever has done in history and never underestimate the power of yeah. true art either yeah. as well you know and like you know like what that can do you know it's, it's limitless yeah you know? 
and you have to dig in deep and you know we, we created our own scene once we could do it again i think i you think know? we're i think that's what's happening yeah it's something that's bubbling up it's not quite fully formed yet there's some sort of spirit out there and it's like you know whenever you get a great oppression mm. you get you know Absolutely. adversity people really Absolutely. start digging in and, and pushing yang, back man. yeah you know, the two things actually yeah. you know complement each other you, you know? know so yeah 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 it's, it's a mad time I mean, you know i'm excited to what, what comes next and mm. i'm also excited for what the new generation is going to bring through mm. you know um it's wicked to see like jungle jungle inverted commas mm. you know sort of and drum and bass stand the test of time and new people get hold of it mm. and like who knows what they're going to do with it all i can say is you know just yeah. don't follow the rules. You yeah, know? Yeah, don't yeah. follow the rules, man. Yeah. And you know, and uh, <laughs> just lean into it. Yeah. And we're gonna be all right. Yeah, I mean I, I'm I feel like we're in a really interesting place. I feel like there's a there's something really ha interesting happening with the crypto thing, with the blockchain and this whole NFT thing. It's not you know, I don't think it it's there where it's supposed to be. I feel like the door is open and so we're people are sort of mm. walking through. We've got all the AI stuff, all the digital art, we've got you know this new technology it feels like we're on the cusp of something really interesting if we can figure out how all the pieces fit together so you're not scared by the sort of you know the the digital revolution no. or you think it's to be embraced and to be like you know they you there's yeah we've always got two choices mm. you know you're either gonna be be embraced by it or be taken over by it right Right, you know, right, right. we really tried to hold back the car. We really tried to hold back electricity, mm. the radio, the steam train, the list goes on. Right. And all of a sudden, once we've embraced it, mm. culture starts blossoming, communication starts happening. Okay, there are certain things that we haven't quite understood yet, like the internet, like really what it's for, technology, AI, mm. uh, money, currency. Right. thing to do is now just like you know, monitoring it, you know, keeping, you know, keeping... The thing balance. Do you know what? If if this is how I see it, it's an experiment, mm. right? And it's not done deal yet, right? Right. So we're it's still an experimentational. Yeah, mode, it's right? like it's, it's it's we're still trying to figure it out. And the people who understand the game, you know, you have a little explosion, and they call it Facebook. You have another little explosion, and you call it the iPhone, right? You have another right, right, explosion, right, right, right. and you call that Tesla. Right. And these are great ideas, but they're not finished, mm. right? These are great platforms to build on, yeah. And if you know, notice, when you start digging in the weeds, you start really looking back to where did people, where these ideas come from, there's new mm. inventions coming through, new people with new tools, new ideas, mm -hmm. new young people. Like we saw in the Olympics, 12-year-olds yep. competing. Right. 11-year-olds competing. Right. Good to see skateboarding in the Olympics. Yeah. A 12 year old girl won and, and for England. Girl skating in, in, in right? the Olympics. And Killing so it, by the way. We're seeing the next generation mm. taking on bigger challenges right. and really excelling right. and like you know my son's five he was like i went to the shop and he, he went to buy this like his normal magazine and he saw the young girl the skater on the front of the magazine he went i want that one right. on the news he goes on. i want that one Go on, and Kofi. i was like yeah you want that one and he's like yeah yeah i want that one i was like good Wicked. and so he's inspired by it so five yeah. years inspired by a 12 year old girl that's for me. Imagine what yeah. how we started it. Yeah, yeah, Fourteen yeah. years old, watching Wildstar, blew right, my mind. Right. So he's been blown. Think about where you can take it exactly. from there to there. You and know? So this hasn't got anything to do with what's going on out there. Mm. This is just to do with how people are being woken mm. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And inspired to do whatever they need you, to do. You told me a while back. You said um, the youth have got the energy to break down the walls. We just need to show them which walls to break. Man, this has been amazing, Chris. I mean, we're running out of time fast. Like I knew, we, I knew we we're gonna. Like my, um, shout to If, shout to Transmit Signal, shout to Dismantle, shout to Randall, shout to my crew. But If was saying, yo, guys, you're going to run out of time, aren't you? <laughs> of course we're going to run out of time. So, yeah, we've got five minutes left. I mean, I don't know whether we should just, like, select a tune for the outro. Uh, yeah, yeah. I want to hear Last Day, you know. Okay, yeah, that's... Yeah. Man, this has been uh, monumental. A link up amongst link ups. <laughs> Signing out with this one. Sounds of DJ Crust. Sounds of the last day. Thank you to my guests for coming in. Thanks for having me, bro. It's been good fun. It's been good. We need to do this again. Yeah, definitely, man. Before the two next two years are <laughs> up. <laughs>
<laughs> for sure, for sure. I'm, I'm about, bro. I'm about. Yeah, man. Nah, enough love, Cross. Enough love to you. Enough love to the family. Enough love to, you know, just good vibes to everyone out there, man. Thanks yeah, for man. listening, people. It's been Gutter Funk. All subject to vibes. Peace. Swoop.